Well, we're back in uh, lovely rainy Medina, tropical Medina today here at the Medina Beautiful. Farmers Exchange Project. Charles, tell us what's going on here. You have, you have some machinery. You're digging quite a big hole in the in the side here. Blue pipe sticking out of the ground, right. and we're having delivery today of a concrete vault, what we call the water vault, and in that we'll separate the line for domestic use to a three-inch line, meter and three-inch going in for all domestic, okay. and then another eight-inch line going into the fire protection for the building. Oh, nice. Okay. Now, this whole front, what well, used to be all fenced and a trailer, our job trailer, right. we had to move all that yesterday uh, to give room for the excavator. He has difficulty with the steel above and the sure, power. Through. We had to cut off the power and put it to a generator here, uh, which is not strong enough to power everything we need, but lights on different floors, but not outlets anymore. Right. And this is just a temporary deal for Monday. Monday morning, we're back putting the power on uh, okay. the city. This hole uh, is where the tank's going to sit, but we have a crane coming in. And how big is the tank? Uh, the tank is approximately 10 foot wide by 12 foot long. It's big... it, okay. And it's all concrete and all has a lid. Yeah. And it's so heavy, 26,000 pounds, that we have to bring a crane in to offload it off a trailer and set it in the hole. That'll happen this afternoon. He's prepping the hole now at the correct elevation. Okay. So tell me a little bit about the last time I was here. We had some forms up, but now we have this awesome ramp. You have some steps. Almost all of the new dock on this building, ADA ramp, you can see right here. Right. Stairs going down into the garden level, and then the dock coming out for the uh, butcher shop and pastry shop, about 10 foot is established. Uh, the concrete company has done a wonderful job as you, this wood is just uh, the last little piece he'll do next week, okay. uh, but I can't allow him to work so close to the heavy. Why is it that all contractors want to be at the same corner at the same, same time? time you yeah. know? So I'm a bit of a traffic cop on this. Now this this area up here will this be outdoor dining space? Right. Well, okay. there is wide I'm enough. The ten space. foot is wide enough to put a couple of tables and chairs. We have our railing that we've already measured all this yeah. for fabrication, shop drawings. But yes, this is the entrance to the uh, restaurant. Okay. Double doors. They have, uh, on a drawing, we have single table and chairs on the outside edge where people can walk by without interfering. On top of the tank that we're putting in the ground, the top of the tank is gonna have two doors, aluminum doors, uh, to get access in okay. for equipment. And it'll have a fire part connection that if we ever had a fire, they can connect to, right. add water to, pump up pressure. Sure. Um, that'll be fenced around so anyone from the outside public could get access to. But then the rest of the area is designed to have a concrete deck that not only can you sit up here, but the stairway, which is not formed yet right here, yeah. Can you go down and sit outside? Oh, nice. Okay. So you sit, you know, in the summertime when it's not raining, whenever that is, uh, you'll be able to sit outside pleasant evenings. I'm looking forward to that. Really nice. Quite frank. What What's the plan for the overhang? I, will there be like metal on there? Or are you going to leave it open? No, uh, it, we're not leaving it open. Uh, I'm glad you asked it. It's a good picture of it and that old silo which is above it and the overhead crane. Right. You know, I learned that overhead crane that most farm trucks that came with their feed or corn didn't weren't dump trucks. They were just regular straight body farm oh, trucks. Oh, interesting, okay. So they backed up to where our stairwell was because that was a graded cover. 
and that crane would come down, hook to the truck, and pick the whole truck in and made her the dump really? truck. Really? That's I was I just found that out this week. Uh, you can still see the hooks, sure, you can still cool. see the trolley system. All of that's going to stay, but we have um, we're putting a new corrugated metal that has been approved in shape and form by the state on top of all these outriggers. So this entire area, not as far out as the crane because it's above it, but this purlin is all going to be covered walkway. And this whole thing is anchored onto the building, right? This, I, I mean, that's, that's this whole some crane, muscle up there. Well, what it is is the turnbuckles and those bars right. that go up on top, you think they're attached to the masonry wall, they're not. They go over the masonry wall and into the concrete deck and they're through bolted. Okay. So it's connected to the concrete deck. Same with the shorter ones for the canopy, they go through the masonry with flat plates and air connected to the deck. It's a very strong system. Very, very strong. It's very cool. Are they, so are you leaving this as is? I mean, I like how it has that industrial, it's, it's authentic to the building, or is this all gonna be cleaned up and sprayed? Uh, we, you know, the easy thing, if it was not historical, is we would spray it, clean it up, and repaint it, but uh, this is something, we found a product that we're gonna air blow, air blow the rust. Okay. Rather than rub it so there's no look to it, we're going to put compressed air on everything. Any loose flakes will come off, and then we're treating all the steel basically with a, an oil product. Okay. And, and that'll seal the steel for permanent rusting, and it'll darken it a little bit, but it'll accent the rust and uh, it'll change. You'll be able to see the history. Uh, like I said before, I, I've told all the contractors, I don't want it to look perfect. I want it to see a patch. I want people to identify a patchy. And the same thing with this steel, I told our painter, I want it to look old. I want the rust look. Sure. All these sliding doors that were on the outside of this level are inside, and we're prepping those, but with those, that was a, a we suspect those were the lead paint. And sure we have a very uh, expensive clear coat, coat system clear that will not, it will show all the rust, but it, uh, or rust, it'll, it'll encapsulate the, uh, the lead paint. Gotcha. And that's approved by the federal government. So uh, we, that environment issue will be taken care of. I'm fascinated, as I'm listening to you, I'm watching in the background, I'm fascinated by the almost ballet that is going on between that backhoe and the overhang and the generator. It's it's very I mean, it's tight. It's a tight space. It's very tight space and he's right on the edge and he can't hit the outriggers above. Um, so he's working within confined quarters. Yeah, it's impressive. Why don't we go inside and see what's changed since our last visit? Charles, if you would tell me a little bit about the spaces that we're seeing framed out. Well, the frame out is the design of the restaurant. Uh, the area here is kind of like a, a training room, four foot high walls people see, but they're going to train people in cooking methods, oh. which I think is wonderful. And this long wall that we see on the other side of it will be their kitchen. Okay. Everything open on the outside will be seating, bar um, outside to the left. But if you uh, take a shot upwards, what, our, what we're uh, working on right now is all the plumbing for above the apartments above. And uh, coming down every column for the drain lines sure. and sewer. We started in the basement, the, the garden level. I didn't say basement. Garden level. Garden level, thank you. And uh, we had to work our way from bottom up. You've, so, you've talked a lot about the core drilling, which I'm kind of fascinated. So I believe you told me the floors, each floor is like five and a half or six inches thick of poured concrete. So you're coming down essentially the four stories, lining up everything perfectly, drilling through that concrete to run plumbing, electric, right. all the systems coming in from the back of the building. It, it's just, I'm fascinated by this almost there, Tetris it, octopus look that you have going through. That's, that's a nice way I call, you know, being uh, more uh, working with concrete guys, I call it spaghetti. Yeah, <laughs> but you call it octopus. But it is a, a coordination between the plumber, the fire protection, the electrical, the lighting. Everyone's involved in every area. This line here, there's our sprinkler contractor, 
This main line is a main water line from the east to the west side of the building all the way to the stairwell on the east side and it'll be the riser. We have a riser on this side, but we had to connect two systems. Sure. Now where's it connected to? That big hole outside is bringing it in. And it's, uh, it's fascinating because, again, it's a concrete building. If, if you are a half inch off, you can't just take a jigsaw and fix that. No, we re-drill, and it, we have been uh, half inch off, yeah. and we've had to re-drill. Uh, there are over 644 core drills wow. in the floor. The That's contractor's awesome. truck out there for the core drilling company has been with us for over three weeks. Okay. And at times we get a second crew here, and we are a little more than halfway. The plumber has got priority because he's moving uh, and has to, like you say, line it up perfect sure. and he's laid everything out. So we're, he's had priority for the last couple of weeks. The electrical needs core drills and they'll be starting next week to satisfy the electrical needs of each floor. Uh, tell me if you would, how do they connect the wooden framing to the concrete? Again, you can't just toenail it in. Oh, no, well, if you notice, anytime we touch concrete or steel with any wood, it's treated material, okay. so it doesn't rot. So the top plate and the bottom plate of all the walls are green in nature. They're uh, treated with a copper arsenic to prevent uh, decay. Right. Uh, so they are actually sometimes drilled and sh what was out on the front deck we drilled and bolted because there was a, uh, a flange and the steel there were holes here they shot with a, a, a shot with a, a, a ram set gun really and they shot into the concrete to grab it okay uh, actually it's it's very strong and then tip do you see the normal nails toenailing on each board top right. and bottom uh, so we've had inspection on the second and third floors for all our framing. Uh, we have not had this inspected yet because there's just a few more offices to be built. Uh, and our idea, the concept that we have now is, well, this, other than the plumber who <laughs> always goes a different direction, we're working from the top down, yeah. plumber's working from the bottom up. Right. We'll cross each other and say hello. Right. It looks like the space is really coming along. I mean, you can start to see the form and how it's going to work. Well, one of the most exciting things in finds, I told you every time, every day, there's something uh, unusual, sure. something I have to deal with. But this week was a very positive week of the sandstone uh, fascia on the lower part of the concrete deck, where, which is going to be enclosed next week with glass. Sure, yeah, let's go check and it out. It is absolutely gorgeous. So this is what you uncovered, the sandstone here. Right, uh, when we took off the covering, which is, uh, we all call it T11, which was probably put in sometime in the late 60s, sure. uh, they glued panels on, and each piece of sandstone, you see the glue marks, and but the panels themselves of this old sandstone, yeah approximately three quarters of an inch thick in steel brackets that were cut in slots. That's pretty cool. And they, they're mounted onto the, this concrete deck. This all started because the wide opening is we have this, the, the glass frames in town already fabricated and the glass delivered today. That next week we'll have the glass company here and enclose this entire front again. We put up temporary weather. I'm glad we did because the cold today, plastic things. So is but this going to be floor to ceiling windows? Floor to ceiling windows all the way around. And that entrance where the gray block is, is going to be a, one of the tallest door systems I've ever seen. Yeah. It goes from floor all the way to the deck. A clear, clear glass on top is going to be taller than the door. It, it's fascinating to see this open as it is right now. I mean, it's been, what, probably 40 years, 50 yeah. years this Close has been enclosed. Up. Yeah, and, and a lot of people going by with the traffic have taken note of the opening. It kind of has opened their eyes and we're getting a lot of compliments. Probably a lot of double takes people driving right. by. Saying, yeah, what as the long heck? as I don't hit my guys. <laughs> but I have not found out how to get the glue off yet. Yeah. Uh, but we will explore every everything to save this 
and, and leave these panels in place, repoint them uh, because they're so beautiful. Now they're these on the bottom, you can see over the years, it was susceptible to salts and ice and winter conditions in Ohio. Um, but we'll, once we do that, we could probably coat this sandstone with a clear product to give a little better protection. So you can really see here where they cut into cut the sandstone blocks. and then there was a clip, a clip. that held them. Yeah. And what's funny is that, you know, when I looked at it first, I thought this would be very weak and crumbling. But you can sit there. This don't is pull too hard. Just in case. Well, I don't want to pull it off. Oh man, I broke it. Uh, but no, it's very secure. Yeah. And I was going to use a whole different product out here, uh, and was going over different products. And then we found this, and we said, "Holy, we're going to save it." Yeah. Well, Charles, thank you so much again for sharing the updates with us and. The progress, it's coming along. Well, thank it's, you. It's looking uh, really, for doing really it. cool. And this will be nice at the end that it's history in the making. Now, Charles, last week when we were here visiting the site, this was all open and we were talking about the sandstone on front. It's quite a transformation having these windows up here. Tell me a little bit about the process and, and what the hope is for this. Well, we had uh, this area, we knew we were putting plate glass in around the entire, all three sides. And it came out much better than I expected uh, from a set of drawings, uh, the appearance when it was done. Everything was field measured ahead of time. And the steel beams, we came in and put new treated lumber up against that. Uh, the local installer is right here from Medina, Medina Glass. A wonderful he, company. Wonderful. One of the best glass companies I've ever dealt with. But their crew came in in force. Uh, we must have had... 10 guys here. Wow. Uh, bringing in the glass, setting the frames, leveling things, and then setting the glass is a one day deal where they close me in. Okay. Uh, this new door, typical on the center, is seven foot tall door, but look at this glass above it. Very cool. That was how it was originally. It was all glass, and over the years, people were closing in uh, different parts and covering over it. So we've brought that back to the original look. Now this is impressive. You get a really cool view of South Court, but then certainly looking up Town Hill is pretty neat. We're looking at the square, yeah. the west side of the square and the buildings on the square. And uh, you can see the hill going up and uh, all the shops on the, both sides. So trying to tie, uh, like your organization said, South Town, right. uh, this is a good way of, of showing that we are tying together to the, the Main Street downtown area sure, historic because we can see it we can almost touch it so this is a i was very pleased with the the view i don't think anyone in the entire city has a view like this no i don't think so uh, you know a little store for us but not the length i could turn left and go down route three sure. and uh half a mile north so so what will this space be when the building is complete how All will right, this, this be is, used this is part of the uh the restaurant at okay. least uh and this will be seating uh, for the evening, oh, nice. Very chairs cool. and sitting board. You okay. can get a table here and look out. Out the windows, we have lights uh, on the outside. It will shine down uh, from the soffit, so it'll be a nice look. But you know, the color of glass like this, all this glass is clear per the historical people. I have no tent. Sure. So one inch insulated glass. And it's a really cool space. I love that the original sign from the building is still up there, and that'll be retained? That'll be part of the well, restaurant? Well, we're under discussion um, with my consultants in the state of Ohio. I would like to leave it the way it is because of the open beams. This, sure. well, of course, was an addition, and it covered up the original signs up that you can see above there. Uh, there's, there was a document that said this was all sheetrock above the sprinklers, so the beams would, oh, okay. would not be exposed, but I would have a sheetrock lid here, and then the ductwork would come down and spread both sides, which will be exposed ductwork. Sure. Uh, I'm suggesting that we just simply paint this like we are all the concrete right. ceilings, that we just paint it the same color and leave it exposed. I mean, just the fact that when yeah. we walked in there, it had sheetrock in there. Uh, is there any value to sheetrock? So, I haven't really got a clear answer on that yet. Sure, I like I like the open feel of it. I, I do too. It really lends itself to that industrial feeling of, of the history of the building. Well, you just said an interesting point, and uh, my partners walking through the buildings every Wednesday we meet, 
uh, have coined that same phrase, the industrial look of the building. Right. Uh, for the ceilings up in the apartment areas, how much we soften, how much we leave natural concrete, uh, all the masonry on the exterior walls. We've been requested to save as much masonry that's not painted. Uh, but upstairs, not, it was all warehouse, so we have a lot of, of the exposed masonry we're saving on the outside and the ceilings. And the term industrial look. Mm -hmm. came up three or four times from, really? from uh, two of my partners that have, are involved with leasing and renting apartments. Okay. I, I just build them. They, they lease it. So <laughs> I'm following their lead and their suggestions yeah. on uh, the look and I'm, I'm telling them what the state says we can do and can't. So it's like a, I'm the conduit communicator. Sure, on you're, it. you're the conductor. Now last week when we were here, there was that big backhoe out here digging this massive hole for the water tank? Right. Is that what, is that what this is? Right. Uh, we look out the window and take a look. Uh, you may want to span to the right and look at the dark asphalt across the street and the root systems that are sitting up there. Sure. We, uh, we were allowed to close this street for one evening at nine o'clock at night and it had to be open and ready to go at five o'clock in the morning and what we were doing was we were tapping a 12 inch water line on the other side of the street the first thing we did is we dug a hole and the city water department came out and they actually did the tap okay into their pipe and left a little stub then we came opened up saw cut the road came across with our pipe backfilled it tamped it tested it and asphalted it in one night. Nice. That tank and the lids are sitting beyond it. That tank's five and a half tons. Wow. Uh, so we had a large crane come in. We had to take all our electric down to pick it off of a, a low boy trailer mm -hmm. and swing it into the hole and have the hole prep with a, a level base. That's a heck of a crypt. This was quite a feat because this is this road is extremely busy. It is. Uh, I never realized how much traffic we really get until you're out there trying to shut down a road at 8.30 at night. And Absolutely. <laughs> people don't want to do it. So, uh, but we've made a great, that was a big part, the utilities. What brings a, a building alive? You know, the utilities. Absolutely, Water, sure. gas, electric, and. Uh, I, I love that in the excavation, you can see some brick from something that was here at some point, some foundation maybe. Well, you know, it's, um, I don't know if a little building or a little foundation or if they had years ago like the uh, concept in the city of that brick road. Right, right. Um, I could see that the two wooden buildings that were on site that burned down probably had a brick paving. Could have. Uh, at that time and the reason they both burnt because they're wooden structures and why we now have a fireproof building here which then was concreted, believe it or not, concrete over top of the brick and then asphalted on top of the concrete. So I have multiple layers of paving out there of different materials. Right. It's almost, I, I'd love to keep a hole open and just date each one of them. You know? Yeah. Why don't you show us around it and let's see what else has changed in the well, past. Well, I, I think I'm going to show you uh, the next step is we'll go on the east side of the building. Yesterday we set the first pair of bronze aluminum windows and doors oh, entering okay. there. So, nice. And they came out beautiful. So nice. I'd love to take a look at that. Okay, so yesterday we set the first pair of bronze colored doors, which is all the windows and all the door openings on the four-story brick building sure. uh, are bronze in color. Uh, we have the stairs lined up. So this is the entrance to the butcher shop and market area. Okay. And what I wanted to see how they came out and how they looked because we're not sheetrocking any of the brick. We're leaving that. So that's staying exposed. And the lentils. So I was thrilled with the appearance. And from the outside, it even looks better from yeah, the outside. Nice. They look nice. When we were setting this, I was on the phone with my consultants. So where in this wall do I put the frame? The, the wall is, you know, like 12 inches wide, okay. 18 inches places. And originally, when it was just a plate glass on the sides, they wanted to set it back to the inside edge with a small reveal. But with doors, 
you have to open the doors, and the door can't open into a brick wall. It's oh, breaking. true. Very good point. And uh, we have closures go a little bit beyond a 90 degree, so we we all compromise the center location. I've got good reveals on the inside and out. Yeah. Now, what's the plan for the old doors? Uh, the old doors we brought inside here to sand down. Um, we took them off the rails outside. The rails still are on the wall, and we're going to be coating this. Uh, all these doors with a sealer to prevent any chipping or falling off an emulsion that will seal the doors but we're not we're not wanting to make these doors look new right we want them to look like they are now but we want to seal them so uh, we set them all up for our painter he's prepped a lot of the doors you can't see sand marks where he sanded it off but you can see that he, he's got anything loose on the doors off and he'll be coating them inside. So they're going to go back on the outside? They're going back on okay. the outside and every one of these new openings, the doors and with the rail on top will be open. And that was another question. The consultant said, can I verify that the doors, the orange doors or blue sure. on the track could close without hitting the new doors? Can we close it? Okay. So we in fact, because they have handles on the outside, I have a like an inch and a quarter clearance where the metal doors could close. Nice. Very cool. And I said, well, you know, it's nice verification. I don't think we have that many tornadoes here. In Ohio. <laughs> but it, it's, it's a bit of theater. That I, I love that you're keeping the original elements of the building wherever possible, but then making it functional for today. That's exact. You know, that's it. The old parts, these doors will be open. I'll secure them so people can't play with them with yeah. screws to the wall. But there's the old doors that were here originally with the rail over top, and there's my new opening. You know, this is modernistic versus the old history. You okay. know, so I'll have two doors that won't set, but all these other frames are sitting right here. They're all in sight. And these are all custom made for this building? Yeah, yeah they all were <laughs> field measured, yeah. Nice. Uh, one problem, I, I know, one problem with setting these doors. So we all came in today, and I got my pass key on the man door came in I said okay well I'm going to change the pass key we're going to use this no we can't find the keys <laughs> that is a problem I, I think the uh, installer took them with them usually they hide them or hang them on the door but I think he just end of the day is in his pocket walked off with them so luckily it's a local guy now we look on this wall at the darkened area I don't know how well you can see that but uh, Kaylee Keller is coming by today. Where we're standing is basically where her, her cases are for the butcher shop. Okay. And then a work area to service customers. But through that wall, that, that's the original south wall of the silo. I'll be laying out two windows and cutting oh, into okay. that wall so people can see uh, them slicing uh, with a bandsaw or hamburger, grinding, whatever, they'll be able to see her prep area in the back. That'll be a refrigerated room um, in the back with a cooler on this end, keeping things uh, at a 30 degrees all the time. But I, she wanted windows so she, people could see it. All her cases are glass, they see right. all the finished product, but they can see people working behind it, which is a great concept. That'll be really great. And I asked her if she'd come by. I've got it laid out on the other side of the wall where I think they'd fit well. I just want her verification. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Charles, again for the update. It's been a lot of fun watching the progress, and we really look forward to seeing what comes next. Well, I have a few things up my sleeve for you <laughs> next week or two.